behalf of You Now TV and in association with Simon Prasia, we have got a very exclusive footage for you and interview today with the one and only Joy Sims. some shows I have um, courtesy of Simon Priscilla. Uh, he was gracious enough to contact me and ask me if I was available for some dates in the UK, mm -hmm. which I was. And it just so happened that it corresponded with the release of my new EP. So it worked out well. So here I am. And I presume that's the main reason why you're here promoting that and also you're working on a new album? Yes, I'm working on a new CD that will be out this summer. Okay. And so I've been pretty busy. And in terms of the people that you're working with, because obviously, um, just in case people at home aren't aware of um, some of the more recent music, as well as being a, a singer, you're obviously um, quite a prolific songwriter as well. And I believe most of you're very welcome. Most of the uh, the material that you've released in the past has, has pretty much predominantly been written by yourself. So have you continued to do that even with the, the new album? Yes, on the new album, I, I did all the writing. I'm working with different producers. This time on the EP that's out now, I worked with Eli Tubo mm -hmm. from the US and uh, a production team uh, called Soul Garden from uh, Birmingham in the UK. And that was Mark Anthony and Jason Williamson. Williamson. Yes. Right, right. And how did you find it? I mean, have you, is that the first time you've worked with any UK producers or how was the transition in terms of the style and how they. Um, I suppose the general work ethic. It was well, you know, with the, we met Mark uh, Anthony. He contacted me through Facebook. Okay. He actually didn't think I would um, respond to his message, which I did. You know, I tried to respond to all my messages, and so um, and he's a like a jingle writer for the BBC and okay. different things like that. So he sent me over some um, music of his, his music, and I liked it and. So we started corresponding, but we did everything basically through um, online, going back and forth, sending files. He would send me files, I would send him files, and that's how we got it together. And in May of last year, I was in um, in Manchester, and we actually met and got together time. in studio for the first time. Yeah. Well, just to, to bring people up to speed as well, um, I'm very much an, an 80s baby. And obviously to, to take people back to your history, because we can't have you here without touching upon half the reason why you know you are still here doing what you're doing today. Um, songs like All in All, Come Into My Life, which is probably one of the, 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 the bigger main mainstream songs, um, especially in the UK. Um, yeah, how I mean, in terms of how the music industry was then to how it is now, what have you been doing um, in keeping yourself busy? I've been, I took a break um, from writing, um, well, I shouldn't say writing, but I just took a break, break from music for a little while. But I continually was writing um, and performing in the States. Um, but music, the music has changed tremendously from when I first came out. You know, with the internet and the technology and everything, it's um, it's a whole new ball game out there now. It, with uh, the software that you can use, the um, the sound has changed. The times have changed. So, um, you know, I just I listen to a lot of music and try to you know keep myself current, and I just experiment with a lot of different sounds. 
And in terms of the, um, the new elements of technology, is that something that you consider beneficial now? Or? Well, it has its good and its bad points. You know, I, I'm a songwriter, I'm a singer-songwriter, so my thing is always the song. You gotta have a good song. And um, technology, it, had, it makes it easier to put a song together. But it's nothing like having live musicians playing that song. To me, that's, uh, that's what I feel. I agree. Yeah, yeah. so, <laughs> you know, I love it working with the band and just having, because it's different, um, you get in different vibes from different players when you're, when you're playing with a group of guys or girls, whatever. So um, the technology, you know, it's open doors for a lot of people. I, you know, it just depends on how you use it, how you use the technology. But it's people like yourself um, who, you know, in, I suppose inspired me, especially growing up in the music industry. Who and what did you consider your inspiration? Um, and what sort of really made you sit there and think, that's what I want to do, I want to get into music? It was, a, it was a process. First, it was the Jackson 5. They were big influence. Um, I wanted you back album came out. Okay. I heard that. Oh my goodness, what is that sound? So, um, the Jackson 5, um, Shaka Khan was a big influence on me, and Stevie Wonder. Okay. Yes. And why Shaka Khan? Because her voice is just awesome. So, there was, I went through my stage of being Shaka Khan, or trying to imitate Shaka Khan. Singing into the hairbrush in the mirror. Of course. <laughs> I think we've all been there. <laughs> And then there was Stevie Wonder because he played and sang, mm -hmm. so that really inspired me. I was like, wow, I want to do that too. So, you know, so I, I really got into the keyboards and everything. And have you ever had the opportunity to cross paths or work with some of your peers along the way? Not the ones I just mentioned. I was not yet, as you know, anyway, but um, I've worked with quite a few, uh, uh, well, concerts, different things like that with quite a few different entertainers. I mean, your, your music's been used in sort of music, uh, movie soundtracks mm -hmm. for, I believe it was Species was one of the main ones. Um, I think there's people such as um, Angie Stone, I think Randy Crawford have sampled some of your material yes. from back in the day, right the way up to one of my personal favorites, Snoop Doggy Dog. Yes. So <laughs> has that, do you think that's had an, um, an impact as well in being able to help um, the longevity of your career? I, w I think so. I think. Um, all, the more exposure, the better for the song, and to have Randy Crawford to cover—I mean, that's an honor. I was—that's an honor. She is a great artist. Almas was always one of my favorites. Yeah, so, I was raised again. so that was great. Um, and, and Angie Stone to even you know consider using a sample, Snoop Dogg, like you said, these guys. I, I, I was very flattered and honored by that fact. And yes, it does um, keep it current. And you know, there's another whole generation of 
uh, young people that was growing up that didn't know about coming to my life, and they would hear the hook and, you know, want to know about it and research it. I would hope they would anyway. So it's a good thing. Okay. And in terms of the new material, because um, you've obviously mentioned in terms of the producers that you've worked with, mm -hmm. um, but I believe on one of the unplugged versions that you you did a, had a little collaboration with Africa Bambate. Yes. So what was it like to work with Africa? Well, I didn't. I wasn't actually in the studio with Africa Bambata. Um, Mark Anthony from the Soul Garden and and um, Africa Bambata knew each other. They right. know each other. So when Africa Bambata found out that we were working together on a project, he said, "Oh, let me introduce her." <laughs> so that's how that happened. So you know, and I was very honored that he wanted to do that for me. So, it, you know, it's just a blessing that he wanted to get on the project. Okay. Well, one of the main reasons, obviously, why you're here is um, you're doing a sort of mini UK tour, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I think it's only fair that um, everybody actually knows the purpose of you being here, as well as obviously promoting the EP and the forthcoming album. Mm -hmm. um, how are you looking forward to, um, to performing across your, uh, your numerous dates? I am very, I am I'm very excited about it. For you know, I haven't been in London in over like ten years, but I have been back in the UK. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's busy, busy, but I'm looking forward to it. I'll, I'll be doing all of my classics, the all in all, coming to my life, okay. lifetime love, and um, some new music as well. And there'll be a few little surprises in there, so it's going to be a lot of fun. But the thing is, you've got your um, songs, I mean, as well as obviously having the success in the UK charts um, from sort of back at the early part of your career, you were blowing up the US R&B charts yes. on a regular basis. Yes. So, and I believe there was, um, they re-released or remixed one of your classics as well that did well over here. I did uh, the remake on Lifetime Love with um, Tom Noyes did the remix and... Oh my goodness! There's there was other me remixes as well, um, but yeah, it it did well, um, and I released that on August Rose Records. That's on my own imprint now, my own label. Okay, it's keeping me busy. So that was that was it did it charted um, in the commercial and the club charts last year. And having your own label is that is there a purpose for that? Just in terms of things that have happened in the industry, or are you in a position where you're looking at up and coming talent now, so that you can help to bring other people through? It, it was a combination of both. Um, I want to, you know, get other artists. I'm looking to sign other artists, um, but also where I, I was coming up against um, being like pigeonholed into the same song, the same kind of song, where I didn't have the creativity and the freedom that I wanted to write as a, as a writer and to explore different um, areas. So I figure, well, if I do my own label, they can't tell they me what I do. can't, <laughs> can't do. You want something to do properly, do it yourself. That's what they say. I mean, it's not easy, you know, and, and the money is not like working with the majors or what have you, but I mean, the market is totally different now anyway. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a struggle, but it's, it's happening, it's working. And things like social networking tools that you've got, as you mentioned, meeting mm -hmm. Mark through the likes of Facebook. Right. We've got things like your MySpace, and obviously right. I believe you're on Twitter as well, so I will yes. be following you later on uh, today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, we can find you um, on, on all of these right. platforms. And um, I have my official site. Yes, yes. which uh, is? Uh, JoyceSimsOnline.com. Everybody, check that out, yes. www.joysimsonline.com. Yes, thank you. And I just want to thank the fans uh, for being so loyal to me and supportive throughout the years. And, uh, you know, I appreciate all the messages and all the love. And uh, come out to the shows. We're going to have a good time. And um, for now, I just wanted to say from View Now TV, again, my name's Natalie Graham with the lovely Joyce Sims. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you for and um, me. yes, looking forward to seeing the shows. And tell your mom I said hi. <laughs> 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 I will do. I'll give her a big hug. <laughs> thank you very much. Hi, well, thank you for joining me for the exclusive interview with Joyce Sims. Very inspirational. For those of you who do know Joyce Sims, obviously her music goes way back. For those of you who don't, then 
you really do need to go and check it out as she's part of the reason why some of the sounds that we hear today have been shaped because of people like Joyce. So, as I said, for now, this is Natty Graham for View Now TV. Hope you enjoy. Hi, this is Joyce Sims. Catch it all on viewnowtv.co.uk.